All right. So my name is Nicholas Bell. I'm the chief film critic with Ion Cinema, and it's my uh, great pleasure to be speaking with Zaida Bergerot and Alma Poisti, uh, the director and star of Tuva, uh, which is a, a portrait of the Finnish author, writer, cartoonist Tuva Janssen, uh, which uh, will, which has been the official selection of Finland for the best international. Uh, feature category for the 93rd Academy Awards. So congratulations on that. Um, let's let's go back to beginnings because uh, it, the script was written by Eva Putro, uh, and it's my understanding that uh, Zaida, you were approached by the producer uh, because he thought you were a fit for this material. Yes, that happened in 2017, and I was of course very pleased to be offered, you know, a fantastic opportunity. And I was a big fan of Tuve Jansson, but it, at the same time, it was it was a bit scary because uh, Tuve Jansson is a, a very loved artist here in Finland. But but I'm very glad that I said yes to this opportunity. It, it became a very very uh, important film to me and a personal film to me also. Uh, it it feels like a, a very personal film, uh, and, and uh, I also want I, guess I want to say that it's a very warm and lovely film. Um, it it made me want to be there. It made me want to be drinking wine and smoking cigarettes with Alma uh, in her little study. Uh, it, it, uh, yeah, I wanted to be transported <laughs> to that time. Um, and also, uh, for if you're outside of Finland or have never seen uh, or heard of Tuva Janssen. Um, I think a great introduction to her uh, as a person and an artist. Um, I, I know I've seen uh, the Moomin's artwork here and there. It, you know, it's it's a major part of the zeitgeist, but I think if you don't know anything about where it came from, uh, this is kind of a, an important look. Um, Alma, uh, you were, you have some very interesting connections to uh, Tuva Janssen, um, I, I understand that your grandmother was a friend of hers and starred in the first production of her play, which is referenced in the film. Uh, and I, I was wondering if you could speak about that and your some other little connections to Tuva and uh, your reaction that I've heard about to being offered the role. Yeah, uh, well, yeah, as a matter of fact, both my grandparents were actors and they were close friends to Tuve Jansson and also Vivica Bandler, who, who is Tuve's great love in this movie. And they worked together since the 1949 <laughs> and became very close friends throughout their lives and they were very important people to each other. Uh, both professionally, but also on a, on a personal level. And they used to write letters to each other and, and call on the phone and have a lot of parties, I think. <laughs> so, uh, as well as my, my father and uh, his brother, they also used to be at those, those parties. So, Tove Verse, well, I grew up with her stories as, as an author and as the artist, but she was also kind of the, the friend of, of the family. Wow, nice. So... Yeah, it's all a big mix up. That's what happens in a small culture like the Finnish speaking, uh, the Swedish speaking community in, in Finland. We all get somehow, <laughs> the, the bridges are very close to each other. Um, yeah, so when I got, a, got the call in October last year that I got the part, I really, I became so happy. I started crying and, and probably jumping around at the same time. And then uh, I got on my bike and then I, I uh, I went to the cemetery where Tove, Tove rests and she's quite close to the place where my grandmother also is laying and then I bought them some roses and then and kind of to blink to them a little bit and then I, I got some champagne and I, <laughs> I had a cheers to their honor and their spirit. <laughs> that sounds, it sounds very fitting. Um, um, this, when, so you were approached with this script, uh, Zaida, and did you feel like you had to do a bunch of uh, additional research? Was there a lot of retooling that had to happen or were, did you feel like it was ready to go? Well, um, we of course worked a lot with the script when we started uh, in, 19, uh, in 2017. 
So I was lucky to be a part of that process. Mm -hmm. So it was, of course, important for me to, you know, um, uh, really, you know, uh, be a part of creating the story also. Uh, but yes, I did a lot of research and it was wonderful because there is so much material available of Tuve Jansson's life. And she's such an interesting uh, character that it was wonderful to surround myself with with um, her world somehow. And there were so many things that I didn't know about her from before, even though I am Finnish and uh, Tuve Jansson is our national hero. So it was very interesting and exciting to find more about her life. And especially as a young artist, as a 30, uh, 30 40 year old artist trying to find her own voice and place in the world. And it was surprisingly easy to relate to that. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, we, ha we had a wonderful team behind, uh, behind this uh, film, and most of them uh, were females. So that was, that was a first time for me to work on a subject like this uh, with so many um, female filmmakers surrounding me. So that, that also made this project a bit special. I think we all, like our cinematographer Linda Vasberry uh, and the production designer Katarina Nyqvist Android, we all became somehow personally involved. And I think, as you said, that this film feels warm and intimate. That, that's wonderful to hear because I think that is what caused it, that it, it really became an important film to us all. Uh, yeah, no, I, d I definitely uh, became instantly uh, attracted to uh, Tuva Janssen as a person. And, and luckily, there's a, a publisher in uh, the US, the, the New York Review Books, uh, that's published actually quite a few of her, uh, her novels as well, like the Summer Book, I just picked up a copy of. Um, and, and of course, uh, Vivica Bandler, I found fascinating. Uh, and I was happy that she's also, you know, because easily uh, Bandler's kind of manipulative relationship to Janssen could have been, um, she could have been a, a villain. And I, I found her strangely, not strangely, but she's very touching herself. And even how the script describes her as this, uh, as the Alma's line about the dragon, uh, I thought was beautiful. Uh, and, and how it's revisited again later with uh, Arno. Um, I was, I wanted to ask about the use of Satra's, uh, the respectful prostitute uh, as the first, that's the first production we see Vivica Bandler working on. And this was a really good excuse for me to go back. I'm an old fifties version of that film, but uh, she calls her a ludicrous paradox. She chastises an actor. And to me that suddenly watching it was my entryway into understanding Vivica Bandler. Yes. If we say that Tuvi Jansson is a, a really a national icon here in Finland, so is Vivika Bandler also. And, well, of course, that play is in our movie for the reason that this is what she actually directed around that time. But it was also a nice way to show a little bit what kind of an artist she was. And as Tuve, she was really courageous and brave also, and didn't settle for the... Um, traditional role reserved for women and I loved that she wanted to direct that Sartre play because it, it, it was a brave play and it addressed um, dangerous subjects and themes mm -hmm. in a way so you don't have to really know too much about it but if you do you can add something to Vivica's character just by that small detail um, it, I almost, I, I watched the whole thing and I didn't realize that that was Krista Kosinen uh, as Vivica Bandler because I've, I've seen Miami uh, and uh, yeah, I, I watched this thing not even realizing uh, that was her. So that's great. Um, uh, Alma, you're playing um, the, the Finnish national treasure who happens to be a, a Swedish speaking Finn. Um, and I, I know you've, you've both talked about this, of course, because it's, a, a part of uh, her as a person, but would you like to comment on the kind of significance of that? Well, it, of course, it's a great honor to carry her story. It's um, quite overwhelming, in fact. And uh, 
I had to, to do some like uh, adjusting in my head how to approach this role and um, because she is very loved and for good reasons all over the world and people have very strong opinions about how to live us and, and also what, what she means both in individually but, but um, also what, what she symbolizes. And one very important discussion I had was with Sofia Jansson who is Tove Jansson's niece who kind of blessed this whole project and me acting to Uwe and said, well, you know, people are going to have opinions. <laughs> so you do your own thing as best as you can and, and make a strong, uh, strong work. And that kind of, that was a big relief somehow mm -hmm. and gave, gave a lot of freedom to, I think, both Saida and me to kind of a permission to get lost in Tove's world and let her, Tove, take over instead of all the time trying to make her justice because you can put her and, and keep her up on that pedestal but that won't do the the movie any services so in order to to get as close as as one could it was very very good to have the family approval somehow mm -hmm. because you you really want to make a respectful portray as well and it's i mean the whole the whole uh, question about a biopic is uh, I don't know, can you even do it? <laughs> How can you make a person's life right. justice or even claim, uh, claim the truth somehow? But you can, you can give glimpses and I think that's what we were working on and just finding these connection points which Saida was talking about, making it personal and also to, be, to work in the spirit of Tove, in both her joy and her seriousness. She, she was very serious about life and art, but she was also kind of making the most of it and making the most of her friends and yeah, I, all I, of the carpe diem. <laughs> yeah, I, I heard, I, I was struck by you described her as um, Tuva as someone who had, would, had the freedom to be curious, which I really, mm. which I really liked. And I, I feel like that is very reflected here. It's, um, in, in how so she was a person who didn't like labels and and I think you come away watching Tuva uh, defying labels. Uh, it's more than bisexuality. It's, it, there's a fluidness that I really appreciated in the representation of um, her relationship with Vivica and Arno um, and eventually Tukula, uh, Tulika. Um, th th I think is feels very refreshing in a way that's rarely seen, especially in representations of sexuality. Um, we already talked, we mentioned uh, briefly your cinematographer, Linda Vosberg, uh, who have seen her work uh, on Blondie and She Monkeys, um, a very notable cinematographer. Um, but I, I wanted to return uh, to the production designer, um, and, uh, so I don't butcher her name, uh, Katerina Nikvis Ernevith, Ernevath? Ernevath. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yes, um, yes, she's originally from Finland, but she's been living in Sweden for quite, quite some time now. And it was wonderful to get this um, connection to her. And uh, I'm really happy that she said yes and agreed to come and stay in Finland again after quite a long time. And she was absolutely one of the key players in building this whole film. Because she, with her, we did a lot of research and she was working so hard in building all these different sets for us where every little detail was accurate. And she could find um, like special, special little things from, I don't know even where, but it was always such a wonderful surprise to come to the set and see what she had been working on with her team. And the most important place, of course, in our film is Tuve Jansson's studio where she lived and worked. It's really the heart of, of our film. And, um, and there were some people coming to visit that set that had been in the actual Tuve studio. And they were amazed because it was so, somehow it had the same kind of uh, realness to it or vibe or how should I say. that they really said that it feels like Tuve Jansson just went out of the to get a coffee and will be back soon. 
<laughs> so, and yes. the way we worked with Linda Vasperi, our cinematographer, and, and Katarina, uh, was that we, it was Katarina's idea from the beginning that we should build the color, color palettes according to Dube's paintings. And that was a really nice way to uh, start working on the visual part of the film. And uh, yes, and luckily, as I mentioned before, I enjoyed so much working on the actual 16 millimeter film. Oh, yes, yes. Yes, it brought a nice, nice feel to it. And uh, some, uh, there was something, yes, intimate and uh, not nostalgic, but something that creates, that helps to create this uh, uh, world 70 years ago. Yeah. Yes, the, the, this this feeling of uh, an, an attraction to it, of wanting to, yeah, not nostalgia yeah. because that that has that that ring of uh, kind of you know safety. Yeah, yeah. safety and it's, it's some bittersweet corniness to it sometimes. Um, yeah, we, but, we try to avoid that. Yeah. Right. Yes, and I, I don't think that that doesn't happen at all. But I still uh, very much want the, you become um, enveloped in it. You didn't want to leave. <clears throat> and a lot of close-ups on faces, uh, especially Alma's, I, you have this beautiful, warm, open face uh, that you just feel so empathetic for. In, in the sequence where her friend kind of tells her that Vivica's been with everybody, <laughs> it's just crushed, and that whole scene, I think, is perfect. Um, but in, but the face I, I was really drawn to. I don't want to butcher her name either. But uh, Lisi Tinderfeld, the the landlord. Um, who I'm like I know I've seen her face before, and I, I've seen Purge, um, which she's in, and she's been around she's in on a lot of productions uh, for decades. But just the uh, automatic sense of like, oh, I know this person. I know exactly what she's like. Um, I felt that for uh, everybody in the film, which I think is also kind of rare. Right, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so this premiered uh, at TIFF, the Toronto International Film Festival. Uh, so you're relatively kind of uh, on the upswing very quickly of this film's journey. Uh, but in um, in quarantine, in lockdown, as, as the pandemic continues, so, uh, you know, in, in a perfect world, you'd be here in Los Angeles and we'd be speaking. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, you, and you'd get to be with audiences experiencing it and then talking to them afterwards. Um, but uh, I, I think this film has a very long life ahead of it. Uh, I think uh, it's going to Gothenburg uh, next week? Yes. Okay. So yeah, the, the, you, you've got a lot of talks ahead of you on uh, Tova Janssen, uh, which is ex exciting and uh, I hope remains as, as fresh as it did you know, watching it the first time. Uh, I also uh, wanted to see, do either of you have anything else you want to, that you've been working on that uh, hopes for the future when things kind of, the lights come back on? Well, uh, I'm in my little work room and I have gathered a lot of books here and I'm listening to music and I'm taking it easy and I'm just uh, starting to find my way to new projects. I'm still holding on to Tuba a little bit, I have to admit. Right. Right. <laughs> but uh, but it, it feels like it's a good and exciting place to be because I don't know what I will be doing next, but there are some projects in the air that we are discussing about. So it's a good place to be. I have no idea yet. <laughs> that, that is a good place to be, yeah. It is, yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, I can't tell you what productions I'm, I'm going to be in, but uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to an exciting spring. But I'm also hanging on to Tove and, and kind of, well, the, the post of it all somehow. Uh, just now getting to festivals and maybe doing some, some meetings with audiences around the world is, is very inspiring and fantastic. And I'm so proud of our movie. And yeah, and I really hope to to meet Saida again in uh, some film projects because she is the most amazing director you can find. I, I think you that <laughs> your collaboration comes across. It's very, it's very beautiful. And yes, hang, hang on to her. But uh, I, I, I imagine this will be traveling for a, a very uh, long time, uh, hopefully. And um, 
and that people really have the chance to see it in the theater eventually because the, the detail is impressive, it's uh, immersive and beautiful. Um, and and also, a, you know, and we didn't talk too much about, her, you know, her kind of secret language with the Moomins, which very was born out of, but also feels like a very intimate, you know, secret lover's language, which I think you respond to very well. Um, but other than that, I thank you very much for taking the time to speak with Tova about Tova with me. And uh, I look forward to uh, the film's journey and congratulations uh, and good luck as uh, the selection process moves forward with the submission at the Academy Awards. Thank you very much. It was really nice talking thank to you. Thank you, Nicholas. <laughs> Hey, this is Eric from MyOwnCinema.com. If you want to support us, subscribe below. For more reviews, interviews, film festival coverage from Sundance, Cannes, Toronto, you want to check out these guys on this side.